May 20, Psalm 83. O God, do not be silent. Do not be deaf. Do not be quiet, O God. Don't you hear the uproar of your enemies? Don't you see that your arrogant enemies are rising up? They devise crafty schemes against your people. They conspire against your precious ones. Come, they say, let us wipe out Israel as a nation. We will destroy the very memory of its existence. Yes, this was their unanimous decision. They signed a treaty as allies against you, these Edomites and Ishmaelites, Moabites and Hagrites, Gebelites, Ammonites and Amalekites, and people from Philistia and Tyre. Assyria has joined them too and is allied with the descendants of Lot. Do to them as you did to the Midianites and as you did to Sisera and Jabin at the Kishon River. They were destroyed at Endor, and their decaying corpses fertilized the soil. Let their mighty nobles die as Oreb and Zeb did. Let all their princes die like Zeba and Zalmunna. For they said, Let us seize for our own use these pasture lands of God. O my God, scatter them like tumbleweed, like chaff before the wind. As a fire burns a forest, and as a flame sets mountains ablaze, chase them with your fierce storm, terrify them with your tempest, utterly disgrace them until they submit to your name, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and terrified forever. Let them die in disgrace. Then they will learn that you alone are called the Lord, that you alone are the Most High, supreme over all the earth. Solomon takes the throne. So Solomon took the throne of the Lord in place of his father David, and he succeeded in everything, and all Israel obeyed him. All the officials, the warriors, and the sons of King David pledged their loyalty to King Solomon, and the Lord exalted Solomon in the sight of all Israel, and he gave Solomon greater royal splendor than any king in Israel before him. From Second Chronicles Solomon, son of David, took firm control of his kingdom, for the Lord his God was with him and made him very powerful. From 1 Kings Solomon establishes his rule. One day Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, came to see Bathsheba, Solomon's mother. Have you come with peaceful intentions? she asked him. Yes, he said, I come in peace. In fact, I have a favor to ask of you. What is it? she asked. He replied, As you know, the kingdom was rightfully mine. All Israel wanted me to be the next king. But the tables were turned, and the kingdom went to my brother instead, for that is the way the Lord wanted it. So now I have just one favor to ask of you. Please don't turn me down. What is it? she asked. He replied, Speak to King Solomon on my behalf, for I know he will do anything you request. Ask him to let me marry Abishag, the girl from Shunem. All right, Bathsheba replied, I will speak to the king for you. So Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak on Adonijah's behalf. The king rose from his throne to meet her, and he bowed down before her. When he sat down on his throne again, the king ordered that a throne be brought for his mother, and she sat at his right hand. I have one small request to make of you, she said. I hope you won't turn me down. What is it, my mother? he asked. You know I won't refuse you. Then let your brother Adonijah marry Abishag, the girl from Shunem, she replied. How can you possibly ask me to give Abishag to Adonijah, King Solomon demanded. You might as well ask me to give him the kingdom. You know that he is my older brother, and that he has Abiathar the priest and Joab son of Zeruiah on his side. Then King Solomon made a vow before the Lord, May God strike me and even kill me if Adonijah has not sealed his fate with this request. The Lord has confirmed me and placed me on the throne of my father David. He has established my dynasty as he promised. So as surely as the Lord lives, Adonijah will die this very day. So King Solomon ordered Benaiah son of Jehoiada to execute him, and Adonijah was put to death. Then the king said to Abiathar the priest, Go back to your home in Anathoth. You deserve to die, but I will not kill you now, because you carried the ark of the sovereign Lord for David my father, and you shared all his hardships. So Solomon deposed Abiathar from his position as priest of the Lord, thereby fulfilling the prophecy the Lord had given at Shiloh concerning the descendants of Eli. 
Joab had not joined Absalom's earlier rebellion, but he had joined Adonijah's rebellion. So when Joab heard about Adonijah's death, he ran to the sacred tent of the Lord and grabbed onto the horns of the altar. When this was reported to King Solomon, he sent Benaiah son of Jehoiada to execute him. Benaiah went to the sacred tent of the Lord and said to Joab, The king orders you to come out. But Joab answered, No, I will die here. So Benaiah returned to the king and told him what Joab had said. Do as he said, the king replied. Kill him there beside the altar and bury him. This will remove the guilt of Joab's senseless murders from me and from my father's family. The Lord will repay him for the murders of two men who were more righteous and better than he. For my father knew nothing about the deaths of Abner, son of Ner, commander of the army of Israel, and of Amasa, son of Jether, commander of the army of Judah. May their blood be on Joab and his descendants forever, and may the Lord grant peace forever to David, his descendants, his dynasty, and his throne. So Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, returned to the sacred tent and killed Joab, and he was buried at his home in the wilderness. Then the king appointed Benaiah to command the army in place of Joab, and he installed Zadok the priest to take the place of Abiathar. The king then sent for Shimei and told him, Build a house here in Jerusalem and live there, but don't step outside the city to go anywhere else. On the day you so much as cross the Kidron Valley, you will surely die and your blood will be on your own head. Shimei replied, Your sentence is fair. I will do whatever my lord the king commands. So Shimei lived in Jerusalem for a long time. But three years later, two of Shimei's slaves ran away to King Achish, son of Maacah of Gath. When Shimei learned where they were, he saddled his donkey and went to Gath to search for them. When he found them, he brought them back to Jerusalem. Solomon heard that Shimei had left Jerusalem and had gone to Gath and returned. So the king sent for Shimei and demanded, Didn't I make you swear by the Lord and warn you not to go anywhere else, or you would surely die? And you replied, The sentence is fair, I will do as you say. Then why haven't you kept your oath to the Lord and obeyed my command? The king also said to Shimei, You certainly remember all the wicked things you did to my father David. May the Lord now bring that evil on your own head. But may I, King Solomon, receive the Lord's blessings, and may one of David's descendants always sit on this throne in the presence of the Lord. Then, at the king's command, Benaiah son of Jehoiada took Shimei outside and killed him. So the kingdom was now firmly in Solomon's grip. Solomon asks for wisdom. Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and married one of his daughters. He brought her to live in the city of David until he could finish building his palace and the temple of the Lord and the wall around the city. At that time, the people of Israel sacrificed their offerings at local places of worship, for a temple honoring the name of the Lord had not yet been built. Solomon loved the Lord and followed all the decrees of his father David, except that Solomon, too, offered sacrifices and burned incense at the local places of worship. The most important of these places of worship was at Gibeon, so the king went there and sacrificed 1,000 burnt offerings. From Second Chronicles Solomon called together all the leaders of Israel, the generals and captains of the army, the judges and all the political and clan leaders. Then he led the entire assembly to the place of worship in Gibeon, for God's tabernacle was located there. This was the tabernacle that Moses, the Lord's servant, had made in the wilderness. David had already moved the Ark of God from kiriath Jerem to the tent he had prepared for it in Jerusalem. But the bronze altar made by Bezalel, son of Uri, and grandson of Hur, was there at Gibeon in front of the tabernacle of the Lord. So Solomon and the people gathered in front of it to consult the Lord. There, in front of the tabernacle, Solomon went up to the bronze altar in the Lord's presence and sacrificed 1,000 burnt offerings on it. From First Kings That night the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream, and God said, What do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. Solomon replied, You showed faithful love to your servant, my father David, because he was honest and true and faithful to you. And you have continued your faithful love to him today by giving him a son to sit on his throne. Now, O Lord my God, you have made me king instead of my father David, but I am like a little child who doesn't know his way around, and here I am in the midst of your own chosen people, a nation so great and numerous they cannot be counted. 
Give me an understanding heart, so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. So God replied, Because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice, and have not asked for a long life or wealth or the death of your enemies, I will give you what you asked for. I will give you a wise and understanding heart, such as no one else has had or ever will have. And I will also give you what you did not ask for, riches and fame. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. And if you follow me and obey my decrees and my commands, as your father David did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon woke up and realized it had been a dream. He returned to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, where he sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. Then he invited all his officials to a great banquet. From Second Chronicles That night God appeared to Solomon and said, What do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. Solomon replied to God, You showed faithful love to David, my father, and now you have made me king in his place. O Lord God, please continue to keep your promise to David, my father, for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me the wisdom and knowledge to lead them properly, for who could possibly govern this great people of yours? God said to Solomon, Because your greatest desire is to help your people, and you did not ask for wealth, riches, fame, or even the death of your enemies, or a long life, but rather you asked for wisdom and knowledge to properly govern my people, I will certainly give you the wisdom and knowledge you requested. But I will also give you wealth, riches, and fame, such as no other king has had before you, or will ever have in the future." Then Solomon returned to Jerusalem from the tabernacle at the place of worship in Gibeon, and he reigned over Israel.